Yeah. So I'm a neurologist and a nuclear medicine physician, and my clinical practice is focused on multiple sclerosis. One of the common problems we see in our clinic is that often patients continue to get worse clinically, but there are no changes on their MRI. So in other words, we don't know what is the reason why patients are getting worse despite having no new lesions or relapses. So this phenomenon is actually called uh, PIRA, or progression independent of relapse activity. And uh, it is part of the uh, entire spectrum of MS right from its beginning, but it becomes really more prominent in the non-active secondary progressive MS phase of the disease, where there are no new lesions, no relapses, but patients continue to get worse. So we have been using a technique called positron emission tomography, which is a molecular imaging technique that looks at uh, hidden inflammation in the brain, basically looking at microglial activation, which is part of the innate immune system system, which is resident in the brain itself and becomes activated in disease conditions. So in progressive MS, we and others have shown that there is increased microglial activation in the brain that we can pick up using this technique called PET imaging. So we use a particular tracer for PET called F18PBRO6, which is a long half-life tracer which has high affinity to its target and basically reports on the glial density in the brain. It, uh, its target is called translocator protein or TSPO, and it has been shown to be a marker of increased glial density. So mainly microglia, but to also to some extent astrocytes. So uh, we have shown, and others have also shown using other tracers, that in progressive MS it is increased. But there are no current approved treatments for this non-active secondary progressive MS. And what we have done in our study is that we have used a novel therapeutic, it's called nasal furalumab. It's a fully human uh, monoclonal antibody which targets uh, CD3 molecule on T cells, and it is administered nasally. And in preclinical models, it has been shown to reduce the severity of progressive MS uh, models. And also, it has been shown to decrease microglial activation and astrocytic activation and has been neuroprotective. This is work done by Dr. Weiner in our group for the last decade uh, in his lab. So we decided to ultimately translate it to humans, and we did a phase one study in healthy volunteers where we found the dose that was led by Dr. Chitness in our group and Dr. Claire Beecher Allen. And then subsequently, we did an expanded access program for non-active secondary progressive MS patients where we treated these patients with uh, this nasal foralumab. And in this paper, we are reporting our findings in the first six patients. And we saw that uh, administration of this nasal foralumab led to a significant reduction in the microglial PET signal at three months and six months, which is really remarkable uh, from the standpoint of uh, pathophysiology, because uh, no other treatment has been shown so far to reduce this innate immune uh, activation in this population. And this basically is a very encouraging result in terms of the potential of this uh, therapeutic approach for treating patients with this non-active secondary progressive MS, because this is really an unmet need, because patients are getting worse despite being on highest efficacy disease-modifying treatment like the B-cell depleting therapies. So we believe this is encouraging, and obviously more work remains to be done. And uh, we, have start we have started a phase two study as well. Since the submission of abstract, we have actually treated a total of 10 patients and they are being followed and uh, many of them have actually shown stabilization in their uh, clinical progression. They've also shown uh, a decrease in their fatigue scores, which is very interesting. We have previously shown a relationship between microglial PET and fatigue. So the fact that microglial PET is decreased and the fatigue is decreased is also interesting. So uh, in addition to these 10 patients, we will do an ex expanded access program. We'll build on this expanded access program and treat more patients in this expanded access program. But also, as I said, we have started a phase two study already. Uh, it's a multicentric uh, trial, uh, again led by Dr. Chitnas in our group, where PET imaging is actually a primary endpoint. Uh, PET imaging change at three months after starting nasal furalumab is the primary endpoint in that phase two.